Restoring old steam toys, a small brass traction engine, part four. How to make a burner tray for the traction engine, which should be suitable for the new alcohol gel fuel. I used the brass block and the freehand milling method to shape it and cut out the recess to hold the fuel. The handle is made from a small Stuart steam engine stud. Originally, this traction engine was not designed to have a burner tray. It was designed and made a long time ago and was made to use that stuff called meter fuel, M-E-T-A. That apparently is now banned, as are the wax-coated fuel pellets, and all that is left is the latest thing, which is an alcohol gel. And I'm not holding my breath as to whether this will work with this design. It will probably work with a mammod, but this is much smaller. And the front of the firebox is open, so if I put some gel in there, I'm sure it's going to run out onto the bench once it gets warm. For that reason, I'm going to make a container to hold the gel. I could make a fuel tray really quickly by bending a piece of sheet brass, folding it and silver soldering the corners, but I think this beautiful traction engine deserves better than that, so I'm actually going to make one using a milling machine, mill it out of the solid. I found this piece of brass in my scrap box and I made it square using the milling machine and I cleaned it up on the belt sander. I have a steel rule in my hand, but I'm not using it for measuring anything. I'm using it as a straight edge so I can make some felt tip pen lines around the edge of the piece of brass. This basically gives me a line to cut to. I am aware that the felt tip pen lines are a bit thick. There's a reason for this that will become apparent when I start the milling operation. The milling cutter in the milling machine is the one that I used to square up the block. This is an end mill type cutter and it's too big for the next operation. I'm going to use this, it's a quarter of an inch diameter slot drill. It only has two cutting edges. Here I've fitted it in my R8 collet, which in turn is fitted into the milling machine, and now it's time to do some milling. You will note that I'm starting the cut well away from the black lines. This is essential, if you start cutting on the line, the job could go spectacularly wrong. The cut is approximately one eighth of an inch deep. I'd better mention this straight away. I am aware that you need to always cut in the direction that the cutter is rotating, but on a piece of soft brass like this, it's really not that important. But if it was steel, I would have to observe that rule. This milling cutter is part of a cheap set of milling cutters I bought from RDG Tools. They've been perfectly fine. Apart from one milling cutter that I destroyed by being incompetent, by taking too deep a cut, too much pressure, and overheating it and destroying the tip. That was when I was cutting a piece of steel bar without any lubricant. I generally try not to use lubricant for the videos because you cannot see what's happening. You have to be very patient when doing jobs like this. My milling machine does not have any auto feeds. I'm cutting the recess manually by winding the handles and really I'm going a bit too fast. The video is currently running at 400%. I normally do this because I do not find watching milling cutters working in real time very entertaining. I admire skillful machinists, it's not easy to do, but my hyperactive brain does not work this way. It is good for other things though, like being a musician, a computer engineer, and getting to level 212 on Skyrim on my Xbox Series X. There is a general trend developing here I'm getting very close to the line now. I go around the edge and the job is generating a lot of swarf now. I decided it would be a better idea to use my vacuum cleaner to clear the swarf out of the way. But you don't have to do that. The old paintbrush that I use is just as efficient. Now approaching the critical part as I get closer to the black lines. I'm actually not really following the black lines now because I want the sides of this thing to be slimmer with the exception of one part of the block where I'm going to fit the handle. At this stage, I do not have a black line to follow because I've cut into it, but that's okay, I'm using my calibrated eye. So, what's the calibrated eye? I talk about this a lot. It's a case of practice makes perfect. In my case, repetition is the answer. I don't personally like repetition, unless I'm practicing, like on my keyboard, or more recently, to focus my brain on speech because I'm taking a drug for prostate cancer and it's affecting my short-term memory. It's really difficult to do this. 
I forget what I'm saying mid-sentence. So I've had to put in a lot of practice to get my speech patterns back to somewhere near what they were. I make a video almost every day, in fact recently every day, and I don't use a script. At the moment though it wouldn't matter whether I used a script or not. I start to read something and my brain malfunctions, it's a very odd thing. But anyway, I'm sure a lot of viewers really don't want to know about my problems. This is the job almost complete. What I need to do now is clean up the part, starting with removing the black lines from the felt tip pen. I was really surprised to find that this brass block is one and a half inches long by one inch wide by half an inch deep, and that's completely without measuring anything. This is the first time I've taken any notice of the graduations on the ruler. It's to mark the position where I'm going to drill a hole which will be threaded to take the handle. Over now to the drilling machine, I'm not using a centre drill, I'm just being very careful and spotting the end before I put pressure on to drill all the way through. I have a chart on the wall in the workshop which tells me the tapping sizes and clearance sizes for BA or British Association threads. And I really don't think this is right. I drilled this hole, as it said on the chart, two millimetres in diameter, and as I'm threading the part, it's threading a little bit too easy for my liking. A bit of acceleration of the video to remove the tap, and the first part of the job is done. I have something to screw the handle into. The shaft for this handle is made from a Stuart Models 7BA stud. To complete the job, I just need to make a brass part for the other end of the handle. This is a piece of quarter inch brass bar in the chuck in the Boxford lathe. First of all, as usual, I use a centre drill followed by a tapping size drill. This time the tapping size hole that I drilled in the piece of brass for the 7BA tap was 1.9 millimetres and again this wasn't all that tight but it should be okay. After threading the part I cleaned it up with some wet or dry sandpaper. The next part of the job is to shape the end where it screws onto the stud. I'm using a round nose tool for this. Now I'm going to machine some grips into the piece of brass. Once again it's all freehand using a very small parting tool. And in this particular application it's very much near enough for rock and roll. Now it's time to part off the component. But I don't go all the way, I snap it off with my finger because I don't want to have to rummage in the chip tray for it. I turned the part around in the chuck and shaped the other end. I cleaned it up using my polishing spindle and now it's time to fit this handle onto the 7BA stud. I'm using the Myford for this because the jaws of a Myford do not have any grooves in them, which can often mark the work. It's self-explanatory what I'm doing here. I'm just screwing the burner tray onto the part. Just out of curiosity, I wondered how accurate the sides were. I know the micrometer's the wrong way round, but you can get the idea. There is one thou difference between the two sides, and that's by eye, so I think that will be okay. The finish in the bottom of the burner tray isn't brilliant because I wound the handle too fast, but hey-ho, you can't have everything. I have my doubts as to how good this gel fuel will be, but at least now I have a burner tray to contain it. The next video will feature a steam test using this burner tray with the gel. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.